Hey there, folks. Welcome back to another episode of My Existential Nightmare. Uh, so today I have a newish uh, backlight kit from Juan Chip here. Um, just got this sent over to me from Retro Game Repair Shop. Looks like they're going to be carrying these kits. Um, I've, full disclosure, I have had this for a minute and uh, <laughs> I, I'm just not getting to it, but oh, that's, that's besides the point. Anyway. What we've got here is actually the result of multiple failures to communicate. Um, <laughs> uh, but finally, hopefully, this this is the one. This is it. This is the, this is the thing. We'll find out. Uh, let me get this separated here. So you get four or five wires, I think. Um, one, two, three, four five wires, four long ones, and then one kind of short, weird looking one. Um, this card is included by Retro Game Repair Shop. I don't think it comes with the kits themselves, but yeah, Retro Game Repair Shop throws it in. It's always a good idea to test kits before installing because these things are really easy to damage, so we'll double check that. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so this is a laminated Q5 based backlight kit. Um, same thing we've seen for the last few years, really. Uh, but this is from one chip, like I said, instead of funny playing. Uh, you've got this, the laminated display assembly. It does include an illuminated logo. So on the lens itself, you're not going to see anything until we plug this bad boy in. Uh, you get the converter board itself with two touch sensors. And there are one, two, three, four, five... Oh man, there's all these screws stuck in my screwdriver. There's five solder pads here. Um, it is my understanding that all five of these are optional. Uh, so you should be able to just use it with the touch sensors if you want. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get it wired up despite the fact, um, just so we can see what's going on here. Uh, these eight pads over here are for programming and these four right here are also probably for programming. Um, you got the FPGA right here and then a STC microcontroller right here. I'm guessing this one controls the OSD, so potentially these kits are hackable, kind of like those um, Game Boy Pocket kits, which uh, I've actually got right here, one of these bad boys. So maybe, maybe you could do similar things with that, but um, that's going to require someone who knows what they're doing to actually try reverse engineering these things and as far as I know these are readout protected so it's possible to set up but impossible to roll back so you know your mileage may vary but anyway that's not supported at this time I have no idea if anyone's even working on that kind of thing um, anyway I've got three strips of captain tape it seems I don't actually know what that's for and then a sticker for insulating the back of this thing once it's in the console. Uh, I am going to just start by peeling this off so we can take a look at this lens here. Um, yeah, same thing you'd really expect here. I'm going to try and catch the light so you can see the logo there. Um, there's just a gap in the printing and then the screen's going to shine through to illuminate that. And otherwise it looks pretty darn standard. Uh, I don't know that we're going to have too many surprises here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get disconnected here. I believe once this is connected, it just lives connected. I don't think we'll have any reasons for disconnecting it. And set this stuff aside, because now i got to get my Game Boy Color torn down. Uh, so I mentioned before that this particular kit is nothing really new. They've released multiple iterations of this kit before. Uh, here, in particular, is an older variant of this kit, and actually the much more common one. I think most people opt for this one uh, due to the ease of install. This particular one is not laminated, unlike the new one. Um, it's the exact same screen. It's going to have more or less the same amount of features. This one should have some new features that we'll go over, um, but I imagine these kits will start getting those features as well. 
uh, but more or less it's just the there, there's an air gap between the glass lens itself and the screen. Um, in most cases, it's totally fine. Uh, in fact, this Game Boy it actually has batteries in it, so you can see kind of what that looks like. Um, that's more or less a stock configuration. It's fine, but laminated looks a lot better. Um, modern devices are almost all universally laminated, so you don't notice it. Um, but the, the, the outside glass protective layer is sandwiched flat against the LCD itself, so it looks like the pixels are just on the surface of the glass. It, it genuinely looks looks better. Um, when the console's off, you know, it just looks like black. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, I should have set aside more batteries. Here's batteries. Hopefully these have charge, but I'm not confident in that. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Disregard. We'll move on. Uh, you get the idea. I've shown over shown plenty of uh, non-laminated kits over the years. Uh, we're going to be using this Game Boy in particular as a donor because this has a really old backlight kit and a really old shell, and I don't really care for either of them, so we'll go ahead and update it. Uh, this is, if I recall correctly, the original Extreme Rate um, gold-plated shell, which... I had some issues with when it came out, notably the finish just has gaps in places near the lens. All of the printing on it is just kind of blobby and, and gross. Um, I don't know, it's it's not great. But either way, inside is a working Game Boy, albeit with very quiet sound. But that should be fine. Because all we need is a working Game Boy Color. We'll do the rest. With this particular kit, um, with well, with any laminated kit really, you don't want to use the OEM shell. You want to replace it with one of the laminated ready shells here. Um, normally I like Funny Playing's shells and they should fit this. We'll test that in, in a moment here. I want to make sure the kit actually works before I start doing some test fitting. Um, but in this particular case, one chip also makes Game Boy Color shells now too, so we'll use their shell and see how it is. I already know Funny Playing shells are fantastic. I don't need to do another install with them to to discover that info. Like the, I don't know. That's it's a waste of time. So we'll use the new shell and see how that is. See if that thing's any good. I am. I'm not, I'm not sure how it's going to come out. Um, I'm a little nervous because I don't think this, this company is not known for putting in their A game every time. Oh my God. That's not the kid I thought it was. <laughs> Ooh, that's even older. Oh my god, it is. I had no idea my Freckle Shack made it into this thing. I, uh, have another Game Boy on my desk. Well, not on my desk, it's put away. Um, that one I thought had the Freckle Shack in it. Because I remember modifying this thing for brightness. And I thought I wired up a potentiometer to make it adjustable, but I guess I rolled that back. Anyway, doesn't matter. Moving on. Old and busted, we don't care about it. Let's move on to the new hotness. I generally recommend, you know, if you've already got a modded Game Boy, just keep it. But if you have one of these old kits, I totally understand upgrading. Like, look look at the difference in screen size for the exact same body size. You've got so much less bezel on the newer kits. It's kind of great. Anyway. I want... Take this and my original screen here, and we're gonna do some quick power usage testing 
um, to see how much power this kit sucks back. I'm not expecting any surprises because the hardware is exceptionally similar to the old ones. Um, it's really only the software that's a little bit different. Got the old power supply here. Got an upgrade for this thing. I uh, haven't set it up yet, but I'm excited. Uh, get some power plugged in. I got the P906. Turn that on, volume up, boots up, no problem. I need a membrane. Oh, it's like a membrane. So in game, the exact same cartridge I always use at the exact same place, Pokemon Silver, Overworld, blah blah blah. This console is or this power supply is set to 2.4 volts and the Game Boy Color is pulling anywhere from 85 to 78 milliamps, which is about what I expect. Um, which for those at home, that is 0.2 watts. I prefer the milliamp hour measurement, but I guess 0.2 watts is technically more accurate. But anyway, that's about what a stock Game Boy Color pulls. Um, real quick, I'm going to do something a little bit silly, because I want to see if this thing needs to be recapped. One quick trick we can do with Game Boy Colors in particular is we go down to C38 and short it out. If your speaker gets noticeably louder, which mine just did, that means this cap is bad and you need to replace it. Likely the other two are bad as well. Uh, this one is only used if you're using the stock screen though, so there's almost no point in replacing it. This one is only for the stock audio hardware if you're using an amp. Of course, there's no need to replace that either. Uh, this one on the other hand is for the power input. If you're using the stock board, you'll probably want to replace it um, if you're using a replacement board like a GBPP, it probably matters less, but you might still want to replace it anyway. Um, and by the way, this is the single only cap on this board you can short out with minimal consequences. Uh, you short out any of these other caps, you're going to short a voltage rail to ground and the Game Boy is going to have a bad time. So don't do that. Just audio. Um, this thing needs to be recapped. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I do have other videos on that as well. I'm sure plenty of, uh, plenty of other people have videos on that as well. If you hate my style for whatever reason, but why, why are you here? If you don't like my style, what's wrong with you? Anyway, getting sidetracked. This is what happens when you go too long without making videos. You get even worse than usual. So yeah, without soldering, plug it in. It just works. Everything's fine. Uh, I need membrane, which I put away for whatever reason. All right. Oh, I hit one of the touch sensors. So in the overworld, I think I hit that one. We're just going to bend that over there, bend that one over there. Okay. And of course I am dehydrated today, like usual. There we go. Nope. Keep going right past it. Okay, so that is the normal color palette. Uh, whatever brightness this is, that's that's a good brightness level, I think. Um, it's got to be something on my desk. Let's try that. Does that work better? No, not at all. 
that's cool. Maybe it'll work better when it's all assembled. We know it works, so this is good enough to go ahead and continue assembly. I guess I'll just have to grab some power usage numbers later when I can do something. Um, I'm thinking something about how this is orientated on my desk is causing some interference with the capacitance sensors, so we'll just circle back to that. We know the kit works, so I can go ahead and continue with the install. That's fine. That is the biggest purpose behind this test. Soid. I'm going to unplug that. Okay. And now, uh, let's quickly double check to see that this works in a funny playing shell, which I don't expect any issues. I'm sure it does. But we'll double check. And yeah, it's a little tight, but I also didn't peel the paper off and maybe the paper's causing a fitment issue, but it definitely, definitely fits. Like, the, it almost feels tailor-made for this shell given where the board stops. Um, that was probably intentional. <laughs> Pop this out though. So that's the funny playing shell. But like I said, we're using a different shell in this particular case. Um, this is from one chip. Uh, it might come with these kits, might not, I don't know. Um, but either way, it looks to be more or less a clone of what funny playing is doing. Um, comes with a plastic lens, don't care about that. Uh, membranes, hardware, plastics. Oh, there's, there's three pieces of paper. I thought there were only two. I didn't realize it goes on top. Oh, well, I guess technically that's one piece. I suddenly folded my adhesive. Uh, where are my flush cutters? and install this in here. I am fairly certain that doesn't say anything about those yellow strips. I'm kidding. It does say something about those yellow strips. I was supposed to tape this board to this LCD with them, but now that I have it installed, that's kind of awkward. So, yeah. Would have made installing this thing a little bit more difficult too, because you saw how I had to manipulate this board while it's attached to the LCD. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Um, of course, they're too long too. Let's just do that. Uh, it's a good idea to not have this board floating in the shell loosey-goosey. Um, because, you know, you, you, you drop this thing, it's going to rattle around and that's just not a good idea. But this ribbon might secure it enough that it might not matter. But we'll just not take any chances. How about that? Now, 
That's nice and sturdy. Oh, I shouldn't have taped this down just yet. What am I doing? I forgot to do the uh, wiring. Whatever, doesn't matter. We'll come back to that. We need an air gap for the wiring because I don't want to solder on the back of the screen. So, what I like to do is use my little aluminum spacer here, which is really just a business card from my friend HDR, but it's fine, it's great. Now, like I showed before, the wiring should be optional, but I mean, I'm doing a video on it. Might as well show off all the features, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four tinned up. We do not need to do the ground. I don't know why they include a ground pad and a wire for the ground if you don't need to solder them up. It gets the ground connection through the ribbon. Maybe it's a best practice thing, or maybe they need it for their test jig or something, I don't know. But either way, it's safe to ignore. Okay. So they recommend using these test pads right here. Uh, we have three buttons. They recommend select A and B, but really you can do any three buttons you want. Uh, the only thing, the only consideration is, I don't know what these button combos are, but if there's any chance you have to hold down any buttons, you don't want it on the D-pad because it's kind of impossible to hold down multiple opposing directions on a d-pad that is working properly <laughs> uh, but otherwise you know it's, it's all the same plus 3.3 volts and then ground um, I like to use these vias over here however but in this particular case I have a little piece of tape cover where is the multimeter here we go put that in continuity mode so it beeps whenever I have it continuity. Uh, so A, you can see, is P10 right here, though I would prefer, I think my V is covered, so it's probably up here, yep. I will show that more in a moment. B, P11 here, but also right down here, probably that, yep. And then select P12, but uh, actually I think that's, yeah. We'll do that one first then. So the easiest way to tin these up, I don't know what I'm doing, I should just peel this off now, is with a fiberglass scratch pen. Uh, there is a little bit of board coating on, uh, on the edge of the vias, so there, there's not bare copper or anything. Um, which makes it kind of difficult to, to get solder to wet to it. And for just about every single Game Boy Color mod, we want the pins insulated. In this particular case, I don't think it's gonna matter because this is taped down and we're gonna insulate it with this pad anyway, but it was already insulated. There's zero reason to uninsulate it. Uh, Let's try it. However, my method of tinning these is usually to just flood it with a solder ball, and as long as you can get enough solder in the hole, it'll stick. Just like that. Now I need to find the other two vias. 
even though I'm pretty sure it's just these two right here. So A is left, B is middle. Exactly what I thought. I'd always recommend using the lower set of vias over the upper set of vias because if you make a miscalculation and mess up these vias, you can recover by using the upper set of vias. But if you mess up the upper set of vias, you're gonna have to solder straight to the CPU. So, that's it. That's the whole reason. Now, let's see. This is my B wire. And it is way longer than it needs to be. I'm gonna cut it down, try and pick up some of this slack. One might assume I've never done this before. Just want to get that tinned. And then what is this B? B is the middle one. Obviously, this does not matter for this specific install because, like, who's who's going to see through this non-transparent shell? Um, but I like doing wiring up to the vias instead of the touch pa uh, test pads because, A, the vias are a little bit more durable. Um, I think they're harder to mess up because, like, if you, if you accidentally rip up a test pad, um, that button doesn't work anymore. Uh, and they're just, they're, they're surface mounted. There's not a lot of um, meat holding them in. Whereas the vias go through the board. I mean, you rip that up, the button doesn't work anymore either, but they're more sturdy. Uh, but also, you won't see these wires. They'll be under the screen. I mean, you won't see these wires anyway, but you know what I mean. What button is this? A. but not least, select which also goes right here. Now, a good solder joint should not need this, but just prevent any accidents when I'm disassembling this thing at an undisclosed date, uh, we're going to use this as strain relief. Just tape these wires down. And then last but not least is this battery wire, which 
we're gonna connect up this way. This one goes on, I believe, the common pin. Let me double check. Oh, why is it so tiny? Yep, goes on the common pin. So on the power switch, we go down to the pin labeled C, get that bad boy nice and juicy and loaded with extra solder. And uh, ooh, I am having a day. Let's grip it a little bit closer. This is why we don't do videos before lunch. Okay. I think we should be good to go to finish the assembly. And now, maybe, maybe. do the same thing I did with the other wires. Just add that in as strain relief just in case I totally forget this thing is wired up and rip it apart in a hurry. That will hopefully protect me from myself. That would not be the first time. There we go. And then this whole board, I'm just gonna add a piece of tape like that. And that should be good. We can bundle these up if you want to keep them out of the way, but I think they'll be fine right where they are. Drop the buttons in. They certainly do not look quality. Or at least they don't look like OEM. They're very dull, gray, faded plastic. Get that in there, get that in there. Now, full disclosure, I have no idea what this battery wire is for. I'm guessing it's a fuel gauge, but I have no idea if it's designed for alkaline, nickel metal hydride, what. Um, I just want this out of the way. Come on, there we go. Uh, weird choice for the uh, screws here. It should be fine, but just 
expected to see the, um, I'm totally f blanking on the name, the, the different head style, because this one is uh, countersunk, but we're screwing it into a board, whereas the stock ones, flat on bottom and then have that little dome shape but whatever it really doesn't make that big of a difference uh, let's place the sensors before going any further I want it a little bit closer to the middle, only because I know I'm going to hit it if it's close to the edge. But I don't want it anywhere near the actual screen connector. I think it should be fine right here. We want to make sure this wire is folded down so it's not hitting the uh, top of the shell only, or so it's only hitting the top of the shell, I guess. This one I dislike putting these over IR windows um, and if you're using this shell probably reuse your original IR window because that one's at least IR transparent um, of course you don't have to use this touch sensor I already forgot which one this is I think that's the palette one, so it's probably fine to omit. We'll find out. Ah, uh, crumpled that sensor, something fierce. It's probably fine. I'm just gonna not worry about it. How about that? What could possibly go wrong? I'm also reusing my original power switch because, I don't know, they usually feel better. Usually. Totally forgot to install the insulation film. Don't be like me. But since my cart pins are already insulated, I think we're going to be all right. see if that feels any better. Oh, that feels heaps better. Okay, so I was using the Y1. Now I'm using the Y0 a bit. Uh, because we're screwing metal into plastic, bottom the screw out, and then back it up a quarter turn, we do not want to over tighten these. Um, that is how you end up with cracked shells. I have not had a cracked shell in years ever since I started doing this. Right. 
So like the funny playing shell, this also has a flat battery compartment. If you want to load this thing up with um, like a lipo mod or something, I don't necessarily recommend that, but it is an option. And um, because the company that makes this backlight kit and this shell also make a battery mod, um, that is what we'll be using today. Um, the shell does not, well, it does include the um, spring terminal, uh, but it's not installed out of the box if you get the one with the, the USB-C hole. Um, so just leave that out, drop in the module. and tuck the wires in, because they came untucked. And I need to position that and not use my tweezers. I see the problem. That's uh That's just that's just a silly problem to have. <laughs> uh the contact does not reach. So I'm gonna bend that out a little. I swear it worked in my other one. Weird. Stop coming untucked. Oh, that's annoying. Doesn't want to stay. This kind of stuff is exactly why I don't like the company that makes this. Because, yes, it technically works. But, like, that wasn't just drop-in the way they always claim this stuff is. Anyway, moving on. I forgot to get power usage numbers, which would have been a lot easier before throwing the back on. But here we are. I guess I'll, uh... Do that at the end instead of circle. Oh, come on. Okay. Okay, so the right touch sensor is brightness. You just tap it. Uh, if we do a medium press, it does nothing. If we do a long press, it does nothing. Okay, other touch sensor is the color palettes that I personally don't care for. Long press or medium press is nothing, but long press cycles through the um, pixel grid emulation modes, it seems. And then I think if we tap both, there. Hold both. You can get into the menu. Haha. -ha. Okay. So we can navigate up and down with the two touch sensors and then. How do we actually toggle this though? Uh, 
Oh, good lord. You gotta hold one of the sensors, and then you can uh, get in. And then get out is hold, yeah. Uh, so we have brightness, uh, V position, and H position. Uh, brightness, I think, should be pretty obvious. V position and H position will adjust the location of the display itself. Uh, so if yours is laminated off center or something like that, uh, you might need to tweak it a little. But in the case of laminated kits, that's probably not going to be necessary. Um, the fourth option, desaturation. We'll get into that more later. Next page, we've got the pixel effect. So we've got normal, retro pixel, interlaced one, interlaced two, interlaced three. Um, and that's it. I will take some microscope shots and, and throw these up on imager or something because I'm sure it's not coming through on camera. Uh, but normal is no pixel grid emulation. Retro pixel is both vertical and horizontal lines. Uh, interlaced is just vertical, or interlaced one is just vertical lines. Interlaced two is also vertical lines, but slightly different. I don't know the difference. I think they're thicker or something. I don't know. Interlaced three is more vertical lines. These are definitely thicker. It's weird that they're calling it interlaced and then they're vertical lines because typically in video, interlacing is horizontal, but sure. Um, let's get out of that. How do we do that? We just hold that. Yeah. Battery display. Uh, ooh. Navigating is not very intuitive, but that's okay. If we turn that on, we get this little bad boy up in the top right corner. Um, I'm guessing it's saying my battery is fully charged, which I don't know what this is meant for, so I guess that makes sense. Um, I wish the timeout were a little bit longer, at least long enough to talk about this stuff, but I guess it's nice that it's short. Touch shortcut. I have no idea what this does. Let's turn that off and see what the difference is. Uh, FRM, we will get into that later as well. Color adjust, I don't know what that does. Uh, I guess I can't do that. Uh, I have to disable something to get into that. Find out in a moment. Logo color, that probably just changes this, yeah. Probably something like 30 presets, 32, yeah. And just set it to whatever you want, or turn it off. I'm gonna leave it white. And then factory mode reset. Um, hopefully this is never needed. Uh, this is just going to reset all of the settings back to the default on the kit, which were how it was when I turned it on. Um, I already forgot what brightness level, but probably looks something like this. Um, we shouldn't need this. In some of their older kits, there was an issue where if you turned the, the console off while it was saving the settings to the board, it would corrupt the settings and then you would just get no display. Uh, that's when the factory reset comes into play. Um, hopefully we don't need that here. Uh, I guess I can try and glitch it, but first I want to see what this touch shortcut option does. So I'm going to wait for this menu to time out. And we're going to try all the touch controls again. Uh, so I no longer have brightness or palette adjust. Okay. I actually really like that. You probably want to turn touch shortcut off. Um, we can probably still get into the OSD by just doing a long press of both. Yeah. So once you've got your settings dialed in, just lock it so you don't accidentally hit the palette every other minute and ruin your own day. Um, the shell itself feels fine. I'm good with that. Uh, I'm guessing button controls. Let's try that now should be the exact same menu. I'm fairly certain it's just select 
B and A. Oh, you don't even have to hold it. You just got to hit all three. And then B is down, A is up, and select A gets you in there. Select B cancels out. So if we adjust that and then select B, it, just, it doesn't save, it cancels out. But if we select A, it'll save. Okay. Yeah, that's intuitive. That's fine. Okay. So now let's talk about FRM. And then we'll talk about desaturation. So I've said this about a million times. If you've seen any of my videos, that is not the flashcard I thought it was. What kind of jerk would put a ZAS label on there and then not have ZAS flash to it? Ridiculous. I'm going to turn the battery display off. That's not getting us anywhere. Hey. Okay. Off. Save. Game. Start. The start and select buttons are really recessed in this shell. All right. So, as you can see, my screen is very, very flickery. What's going on? I've said this a million times before. I think I've even already said it once during this video, or at least started saying it. Uh, the original Game Boy console, and all the way through the Game Boy Advance, I, I think, uh, doesn't actually have a built-in way of handling transparency. Um, transparency just isn't a thing as far as the hardware is concerned, but... That's not the full story. See, the original screens on these consoles had a terrible pixel response time, and that resulted in severe ghosting. Um, and so devs actually just took advantage of that fact, and they would flicker sprites on and off as fast as they could in the system, and then the screen itself would blur all of that together and then get a nice transparency effect. Now, obviously, this modern screen is handling the flickering exactly as intended. This is what this game is supposed to look like on non-shit hardware. But, uh, because devs did what they did, um, this particular game looks like an absolute total mess. So, the workaround for that is a feature that has been included in quite a few kits at this point. FRM! This will blend frames together. It does effectively um, lower the, the frame rate in the console, I think. Um, if we're averaging frames together, in theory, we're down to 30 FPS instead of 60. But that, that's something, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what their algorithm's doing, so don't quote me on that. Um, but what it is likely also doing is adding a little bit of latency. So, I, it, it can't display the current frame without the data for the next frame. Which means every single frame you're seeing is at least one frame behind. Um, it's possible that the screen is, this particular screen is doing that anyway. Um, so turning FRM on might not make a difference, but uh, chances are pretty good that turning FRM on does introduce at least one additional frame of latency. So, unless your game uses transparency, in theory, it's better to leave it off than to use it. But, in practice, I don't actually notice. But with the frame blending on, this looks a lot better. This is no longer a flickery mess. Um, it's still kind of flickery, but that's also, at this point, just the game itself. Um, it's gone from unplayable to playable, however. That's FRM. This is by far the worst offender as far as this effect goes, but this is not the only game that does it. Uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is also pretty common. Um, I use that one as an example quite a lot. Uh, let's see if I have a flashcard handy. That looks like a flashcard. I like that example because that's a common game that many, many people have. Um, I think some of the attacks in Pokemon do it too. Uh, so like gold and silver and crystal and whatnot, but I don't know offhand. What am I looking for? I think it's called Zelda. There it is. But 
this game, it's really easy to show that effect noise and early in the, in the game. Which is exactly what I've got right here. I think my button was stuck down. I don't like that. So yeah, that's, that's this dude's chain. Uh, because we have FRM on, it is nice and transparent and uh, looks good. Um, I believe the reason that the flickering is used in this specific game is um, because there's also a sprite limit in hardware, uh, and each one of those chain links is a sprite. So by alternating which ones are shown every other frame, you can effectively double your um, sprites, allowed sprites on screen. Because we've got one for the butterfly, another for that butterfly, this guy right here, Link, um, the actual chain, the, the ball himself, and then the six links. You know, that's like 12, 12 sprites, all in all, plus these flowers. You know, it, it, it adds up, so. Anyway, but don't quote me on that one either. I'm not 100% sure on that. That's just what I've been told. But either way, FRM on, looks good, everybody happy. Uh, another test I used to do quite frequently was checking to see, um, on some screens, for whatever reason, this color brown and that color green don't mesh well, uh, and so quickly swapping between the two would result in artifacts across the LCD. I'm not seeing that here. Uh, I haven't seen that in a long time. I haven't seen it on any Q5-based kits, and that is still the case here. Let us go back into the menu. Let's run a few more artificial tests, and then we'll talk about the, uh, the other menu option that I totally glossed over. GB test ROMs. I want... Oh, wait, no. I don't want that. I want... Was it one of Matt's? Yeah. I haven't done this one in a while either. Uh, another issue with some of the older kits is during a LCD reset command, which is something that does happen regularly, um, for whatever reason, the older kits just couldn't handle it and they would like go, go blank for a few seconds at a time. And that you know, some games just do that during normal gameplay. So if you're losing your screen for a few seconds at a time, it could be catastrophic. Pokemon Pinball was one of those games. Every time it'd swap between the upper and lower half of the board, um, it would issue a screen reset. And for older kits, especially, especially this one, this was actually the infamous kit um, that made me start doing those tests. Uh, in the 690 era, the, the, the Freckle Shack kits from Ben Ben and the competitors too, not just Ben Ben's, but especially Ben Ben's, um, they, they'd go out for a long time. This is only dropping a single frame. It is not an issue. Totally passes this test. All is well. Now you might notice things are looking a little bit blurry on the bars. Um, they should be a lot sharper. Let's try turning FRM off. And wow, look at that. Instantly, everything in motion is much sharper. So there, there's a there's an example of why when you might not want to use FRM. Um, yeah, leave it off unless you're playing a game where you actually want it, then turn it on, my opinion. But anyway, moving on. That's another f uh, total success there. Nice pass. That's the word I was looking for. Shibia test rooms. 240p. Right up at the top. Color bars. That's exactly what I was looking for. Alright, so I like this test. This is pretty standard across all of GB, well, across 240p test suite. Uh, I'm going to use the touch sensors to try and avoid getting out of this menu here. Uh, unfortunately, my, my blue bar is going to be covered up a little, but that's okay. Wait, I already forgot the controls. We just got to hold one. 
and then I can walk you through the desaturation steps and you can see what it's doing to the colors. You can see I'm losing bit depth. Every step of the way. And then at the bottom, I think we should be all the way in black and white, yep. Now, when we're using this desaturation feature, I believe the color palettes are also locked out. So let me get out of this menu. Wait, we just got to hold one. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to turn the touch shortcut. Nope. Ah. I held the wrong one. Come on, there we go. Touch shortcut, I want that back on. Now if we get out of here, I should still have my adjustable brightness, but I don't. Oh, I do have the color palettes. I guess it just overrides the desaturation. Uh, I think that's... Okay, so this lets us uh, desaturate the colors a little, do, do a little bit of color correction. Let me get, I think this is what I'm looking for. Nope, V.89. How about this? 1.08. Okay, not current firmware, but good enough. I need, how convenient, it's 240p test suite right there. I've got a funny playing FPGBC here, uh, and I have on a newer firmware, the desaturation feature already activated. I'm going to compare the two. Um, this already has desaturation enabled. You can see in the display mode, it's X4 Emu. We'll set that to full Emu, so it's full, full Emu. Um, full screen emulated colors, or we can do full screen without emulated colors. But with the emulated colors is the desaturation. We'll go down there and save it. Close that, and we can compare the two. Um, this one... I need color tests and color bars. I guess we're going to do a little bit of guess and check. Yeah, it looks about right. On the FPGBC, the reds are a little bit more orange, but otherwise the other colors look about the same to me. But I notice on the FPGBC, each of those color bars is its own distinct color. Um, the bit depth is preserved, as it were. Uh, whereas on this thing, on the new kit, some of these are merged together, which leads me to believe that we're losing some color accuracy. I mean, I guess that's kind of the name of the game, though. Like, the whole point is desaturated so that it's a little bit more representative of these screens. But, I don't know. What, whatever Funny Playing's doing, I think is they're doing it better. But, this is tweakable. Funny Playing's is, it's either on or off. But this, we got a range from 0 to 20. Um, 20 is off. 0 is no color. <laughs> Zero or 20 is no color correction, and then zero is no color. <laughs> uh, so somewhere in that range, I guess, is something you might want. I believe I left mine at 12. 11. I meant to leave it at 12. We can adjust that up. And I never get the same colors out of this that I do out of the funny playing one. Because like I said, that red looks a little bit orange. And the closest I can get to that is about 9. 
but we've just we've lost so much color depth. I sincerely doubt it will make a difference. Um, the Game Boy Color can only display so many colors at once on screen. Like it support it supports all of the colors, yes, but not at the same time. Um, so you're never going to see this sort of thing where you have that where you have those similar colors next to each other. I hesitate to say, but I think I think you'll have a hard time finding a game where this reduced color depth actually even makes a tangible difference, uh, let alone noticeable one. Um, that being said, there's room for improvement, but I guess it is nice to see. Uh, so, I guess I can explain what this is if you don't know. Um, the original Game Boy screens didn't have any internal lighting. You use this thing by angling it properly towards your your lamp or your ceiling light or, or the sky or whatever, and then you'd use the light reflected off the screen to actually see what's going on because there's no internal lighting. As a result of how that works, the colors on this screen are going to appear more muted than they will on literally any other screen. So, because the colors on these replacement screens are so bright, this desaturation allows us to emulate the look of, of how it might look if we were still using this screen, but lit. So, it's, a, it's an approximation, I guess. Um, I personally am, am all for the idea. I think it's super cool, but I don't know if this is good. I don't have a frame of reference. The only other thing that I have that I can even test this with is the Funny Playing FPGBC. And like, I don't know, it, it, it looks weird. Like, I guess that's how it's supposed to look, but it just looks weird. I'm, I'm used to the oversaturated, bright, nice colors. And honestly, I don't know that I care for it that much. On this specific screen, I like one chip's implementation better. I think it's a little bit more pleasing on the eyes, whereas this is kind of like a, a, a sickly color, where this is just nice and muted. Um, I don't know, your mileage may vary. Uh, if there's any specific games you want me to test with this, I can, I can try. If I'm being honest though, I don't want to put that much effort into it. So like if it's, if it's a quick picture, I'll go for it, but I don't know. Let me know on, on in the comments or on Twitter or some something. I'll, I can try and snap something. But in the meantime, we're going to go back to Pokemans because that's the game I play. That's the game I know. We're going to look at it. Oh, actually, how's that look? I think that actually looks proper. We can do it side by side. Just put it in the FPGBC too. Turn off the color correction. Close. <laughs> it's so much louder. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's obviously different. This is about what every other backlight kit's going to look like. Um, if it uses a Q5, that's pretty much exactly what every other backlight kit's going to look like. But each screen's going to have slightly different color values. It is what it is. These things aren't calibrated, as far as I can tell. But, yeah. I don't know. I think it's fine. Of course, I'm not... I don't have the same save on both of these, uh... Also, not even the same time of day. But you get the idea. You know what Pokemon looks like. Let's try adjusting this again. This is what this is what the world looks like when you have depression. But then like Toby Maguire in that one movie, 
You can meet someone and then suddenly everything's in color. I don't know. To each their own. I personally kind of like the uh, oversaturated colors. I've grown used to it. I think it's nice and pleasant, but if you want, if you want an authentic experience, you just use your original screen. But if you want to pretend you're having an authentic experience, I guess this is uh, a pretty decent feature. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I see no reason to get their older kits without this function, because if you don't like it, you just don't use it, right? Um, but as far as the kit goes itself, I mean, it's the same Q5 screen that we've had for years at this point. Um, if you already have one, you're not missing a single thing. It's the exact same screen. Uh, that being said, there are some features that, you know, it's going to have to be up to you to decide. Oh, this volume wheel definitely needs a clean, too. Just pressing on it changes how loud the sound is. Um, yeah, maybe these new features make a difference to you. If you are if you have an older kit, you probably don't have that FRM feature either. But if you're not playing this specific game, it probably does not make that big of a difference to you. Uh, and then this desaturation thing. This is the first kit that I know of that has this feature. Um, I think maybe, no. Retro 6 has made a Game Boy Advance kit with this feature. This is the first Game Boy Color kit with this feature. Uh, I don't know. It's all right. Oh, I just remembered. I have the, the reference. Analog did the screen modes very well. Oh, same problem. Uh, I guess we'll just swap this out. And uh, you know what? I bet this has my silver seat on it, though. Do a side by side, hopefully. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so the analog is a little bit more saturated than this specific setting, but it's adjustable. We can change it. It's about there. What do you think? Wait for the menu to fall. Oh, there it goes. And of course we can swap that back to the original colors. On the analog, I, I do like the desaturated colors, actually. Um, specifically, I'm using the original GBC LCD mode that includes some pixel grid emulation. I know, I, I understand. You, you sit here, you watch my videos, you hear me complain about how much I hate the pixel grid emulation, blah, blah, blah. But analog does it really well. It actually looks good on this thing. This screen uses 10x integer scaling, so there's a lot of pixels to do some cool stuff with. This screen does not use 10x integer scaling. I believe it's only 4x. I can't remember. I think it's 4x, maybe 3x. Either way, it's a lot less than 10. Um, you know what? Let's just, just to be sure, where's the pixel? Turn that on, huh? Yeah, I, I like it better on the analog. It's it's too aggressive here. There's not enough pixels to do it properly, I think. Not to mention, on here, the pixel grids are just pure black. There's no transparency or anything. 
Whereas on the analog, it looks like they're just a darker gray. Maybe there's transparency. I can't tell because they're, they're so, they're faint. It's there. You can see them if you look. Uh, but when you're looking at the entire screen as, as a, as a thing, instead of pixel peeping, you don't even notice it. It looks fine. On this thing, it, it's it's hard to not notice. It's hard to not pixel peep. I don't know. It's just something about the way it's implemented. Um, it's fine. I don't like it though. I stand by what I said. I don't know that the saturation makes a difference to me in that case, but there you go. You want it to look like an analog pocket. About 14 is uh, what you, yeah, about 14, there you go. I don't know, what do you guys think? I, I think it's not perfect. I think there's still a little bit of room to improve, but it is a step in the right direction. I am so sorry that it has taken this long just to even get this junk in these kits. I've been asking for it for years, um, and they totally blindsided me. They they just they they funny playing finally did it in their FPGBC, and then one chip looked at that and said, "Ah, oh, oh, now we have something to copy. We might as well implement it too." So there you go. Looks fine. Um, so I guess I guess that's about it. Let me go ahead and wrap this video up. Um, shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this stuff my way to check out. I know I mentioned that earlier in the video, but I want to make sure I mention that always because you know I, everyone everyone's biased in some way. Um, I upload videos to YouTube that I make money off of. Not a lot of money, mind you. I, it's, it's just just ad revenue, and I don't have nearly enough subscribers to get any meaningful numbers. But you know, it still it still pays for snacks and such. So there's still obviously some motivation on my end to to make good videos and, and whatever whatever I think I need to make that good video that video good. You know, that's all I'm trying to say. Just full disclosure is all. Um, I totally forgot to test with these batteries and power consumptions. Consumption. So let's do that now. Uh, but I just want to disclose that. Make sure everyone is fully aware of where my loyalties lie. I think I'm being fair, but I don't know. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you think I am unfairly um, biased against one chip, which probably wouldn't be wrong if you said that. Uh, <laughs> I have my issues with them, but not for this kit. This is fine. This is totally great. Where is my, where's my flash card? There it is. Set that to max brightness and on nickel metal hydrides. Still booting, so power consumption can't be that bad. Booting slow though. Yeah, I don't know, that's not bad. But anyway, that's where my loyalties lie. Everyone's biased no matter what they say. Um, I try to be fair and unbiased, but I'm sure something's leaking through somewhere. So just so you're all aware, take that how you will adjust my opinions based off that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't care for this shell. I don't care for the buttons in it. And I don't care for the battery mod. There it is, this thing. I have a separate video on that. Um, it is not currently published. This is probably going up before that video. Um, but I will try and link the two together when they're both published. Um, I don't like these things. I went over why I don't like these things in that video and we'll just save it for that video. I don't like this shell. It just, the fitment ain't, this ain't it chief. 
Um, Fitment's kind of weird. Funny playing, it's... Unless funny playing doesn't make the color you want, just go with the funny playing one. You're gonna have a better time. And, uh, last but not least, power. If you've already got a Game Boy with a backlight, just keep keep enjoying. It's fine. do some power usage testing. Before was something like 80 milliamps, 2.4 volts, still at 2.4 volts. I like testing at 2.4 volts, by the way, uh, because even though a fully charged set of alkaline batteries is going to be 3 volts, or a f hell, even depleted lithium ion battery is going to be higher than 3 volts, um, Lower voltages stress the system out more, and if it fails at lower voltages, it's going to fail on nickel metal hydride batteries, and that is useful information, I think. Um, and then I picked 2.4 volts because that's about the nominal voltage of these things. I think if we test too much lower, we're going to run into problems too consistently, whereas 2.4 is a good middle ground, I think. So anyway, there you have it. Uh, I believe we're at maximum brightness, and this thing is sucking down 283 to 292 milliamps. So, three and some change times as much. <laughs> uh, let's cycle brightness down. Uh... One step, I didn't notice a very big difference. I guess let's bring it down 10 steps and extrapolate. Uh, so at midway point, this thing's pulling 239 to 242 milliamps. And all the way at the bottom, this thing's pulling 202 to 213 milliamps. Uh, I personally would probably use it between 8 and 16-ish um, in this lit area. <laughs> uh, this is just my office. Aside from the, the lights I have surrounding my desk, this is a normal amount of light, I'd say, in a, in a daytime inside, indoors area. Um, so, yeah, brighter is brighter, but... In here, I think 10 is good. But if I'm on a darker area, maybe I'll go as low as 6 and pitch black. I don't know. Let's see. I think that's still going to be a little bit bright in like a pitch black area, but if you're playing this thing in bed, just, just go to bed. <laughs> that's not bad. I'm going to max this out again, and then we're going to see if any of the other features use power. I don't think they do, but... Yeah, nothing. No difference between 0 and 20 on desaturation. Pixel effect, we will turn off. No difference in any of the settings. Uh, this is an LCD, not an OLED, so it doesn't make a single difference what pixel setting you have. Uh, battery display probably makes a difference. Ooh, we'll turn that on in just a second. I'm turning touch shortcut back off. FRM, we're going to turn that on. That also doesn't seem to make a difference, so... There we go. Now we know. 
color adjust. I never got to that. Is that something I have to do with desaturation? No. How do we do that? Hang on. Hang on. Checking my cheat sheet. I said I'd circle back. I forgot to circle back. Uh... Color adjust is not available in normal color mode. I don't... I don't know. So do we have to turn that back on and then we'll do one of the palettes and color adjust is now available okay so that's how that works so if you enable one of the palettes you can set your own ah there you go you can you can make your own custom palette if you want I don't know what I would do here. I don't know that I would use this at all, but I mean, if you if you want to, there, there you go. You can you can create what I've just created, which no one should create, but you can if you want. There you go. All right, so yeah, new features are nice. Um, I'll try and link to some of the old stuff if you want to check it out. It's all right. The controls on this thing are a little bit, they're, they're not intuitive, I think, but it's not too difficult to figure out what you need to figure out. And then you can just ignore them because I think with something like this, it's more or less set and forget. You just kind of set it to what you want and then leave it there and it'll probably be fine. In, oh, wait, 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 there's one more thing I gotta test. One more thing, one more thing, one more thing. One last thing, I'm sorry. I keep doing this, but I forgot to test the battery. Uh, oof. Um, yeah, I don't know, set and forget, and then just move on. Battery display on. So now it's saying low, low, low battery. So I bet if we modify the voltage and bump it up, All right, so at, oops, 2.6 volts, it is, it looks like at about a third, or 2.5 volts, I'm sorry, at about a third. Bump it up to 2.6 volts, it hasn't changed, 2.7 volts, hasn't changed, maybe I'm going too quickly though. 2.8 volts, it hasn't changed, oh! Now it has changed. Now it looks like about two thirds of the way. 2.9 volts. Three volts. Oh, now it looks really full. 3.1 volt. 3.2 volt. 3.3 volt. 3.4 volt. Now it's full on 3.4. I don't get that. I don't know what this is meant for. Uh, lowering it down to 3.2. I think there's just delay on it. I'm gonna drop it to three volts and leave it there for a little bit. Okay, at three volts, it dropped down. So 3.1. I'm trying to figure out what the max charge voltage is. I think the max charge is max charge is 3.2 yeah 3.2 volts is ugh, max charge um i don't know what batteries that's meant for because alkaline's max charge well i guess you can get 3.2 volts out of two alkalines okay so um if you're using anything but alkalines don't bother with the battery meter 
because it's, it's not going to work for you. It didn't work for the rechargeable battery kit, which is weird because this battery kit, this shell, this kit are all made by the same company. You'd think they'd all be compatible, but again, just just another gift from one chip, I guess. But um, yeah, it's not bad. But there you have it. All right, I think I gotta get out of here. I meant for this to be a 40 minute video. It has been an hour and a half. And if I keep rambling, if, if I don't stop now, I will keep rambling. Um, I don't need it to be that much longer. So links in the description. I will link to some older uh, videos on older versions of this backlight kit or maybe even competitors. Uh, I will link to... I will link to this stuff in the description. Um, this kit is already up on Retro Game Repair Shop. You can grab it right now. I don't know if they're stocking these shells, and I'm fairly certain they're not stocking these batteries. Um, I'm going to link to the funny playing equivalent for the shells and the batteries, though. Um, I believe they're both better. Uh, this thing has some egregious... Uh, I don't want to call it a safety violation, but it, it definitely concerns me how hot it gets. This little chip right here that's pressed directly against the battery cell uh, gets a little spicy when you charge. It's not malfunctioning, that's just how it works. <laughs> um, you know, st st stuff like that. There's no low voltage protection, nothing. It, it's not great. And this shell, it's usable, it's fine, but the funny playing ones really do feel better, um, especially the buttons. I don't know if it's the buttons or the shell in this particular case, but the buttons that come with the shell should work well with the shell, and they don't. So I'm just gonna say pass on both. Um, but you know who you are. Uh, if they make their shell in a color that you want, like this forest green-ish, whatever this is supposed to be, um, I know for a fact Funny Playing doesn't do this color. Um, I don't know that it's my first choice for color, but it's certainly not bad. But, you know, you know who you are. Anyway, links in the description. Um, it's all right. It's good. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Peace.